Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> I just got off the phone with a brother. He called me. He felt led to call me. Oh, Jesus. And the Lord know I needed it. I've been fighting, man. I've been fighting hard. I get so discouraged because Jesus is the realest thing, man. The realest thing that I've ever felt. The realest love that I've ever felt. And I'm not ashamed to tell people that I love Jesus with everything that is in me. And I love him so much. Like, I be wanting the world to know. And it's like, the harder... The harder I go for the Lord, the more I get attacked. And in the ways I get attacked, it's like I can't even tell anybody because of the people that are involved. And, and you know, I be sitting there talking to the Lord and I'm praying. And sometimes you sit there and you get in these different situations in life and you say, why, Lord? Why am I going through this? And that's why I came up with that thing through the fire to be on fire. You know, when I was in the world, the devil wasn't bothering me. I'd go to the club and, and, and do what I do and sleep around and stuff, and he wouldn't bother me. But as soon as I started trying to live for the Lord and, and get serious about relationship with God and get away from religion, it's like all hell started breaking loose in my life. And I don't know, maybe some of you have never heard my testimony. When I was 12 years old, my self-esteem was so low. And the devil was talking to me so clear. I was going to kill myself. I remember being in Chicago, walking down to the bridge, and I just felt this darkness around me. And it was two things that I always wanted to be growing up. Some people say, why you got so many kids? I wanted to be the father that my father wasn't to me. And I wanted to preach. And things were so bad when I was young. And my father wounds were so deep. And my self-esteem was so low. That the enemy was using that against me. He was talking, you ain't never going to preach. You ain't never going to be this. You ain't never going to do that. And I remember people close to me hurt me. You know. And I remember walking down to that bridge. In the dark sitting down and just talking to me, talking to me. And it was so loud. You never gonna do, you never gonna preach. You never gonna be this. And my, the tears was falling and I was looking at the traffic. I was getting ready to jump in and I felt the hand of the Lord grab the back of my neck. I swear it was the realest thing, the realest thing I ever felt. And it was like, it was like warm oil was going down the back of my head, down my neck and my back, down my arms, and I could feel it. And he said, son, don't do it. I got a purpose for your life. 12 years old. Now you see me and I'm preaching and I'm doing these things and the enemy attacks me. You know, people see the crown, you, they see the Facebook, but they don't see the battle. They don't see the scars from, from carrying the cross. And we got Christians who wanna, they think that it's, you know, it's just a game and Christianity is easy. And I post stuff and I feel this fire in my bones and I feel like I'm trying to shake the church. I'm trying to wake the church. And it's like, Lord, they're not listening. They're not hearing me. They don't see what you show me. And, and it's like, you gotta fight this depression. And I don't even know how to explain it to you. It's like my heart is broken. I love people. I love people. And I promise you I'm not an arrogant person. I, I preach truth and I preach what God tells me to say. And so many days I want to deactivate my Facebook page. And I want to quit. And I want to give up. And see, it's not that I'm putting on a front. Because every day that I'm going through it. I, I just run to the presence of the Lord. If, if I don't know what else to do, I just, I lift up my hands and I start calling on the name of Jesus. And you know, he just gives me strength. So today I'm sitting in my house and I can't tell you, you know, everything that I'm going through, 
but I'm just discouraged and I'm sitting there like, Lord, why is this happening? Why is this happening? But, you know, I trust you. I'm going to praise you anyway. And then the Lord spoke to me. And this is the power that's in the word of God, man. Scripture I heard so many times. He said, 1 Peter 4, 12, 19. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye are reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. He said, count it not strange. And the word that God gave me is a lot of Christians are trying to avoid being on the devil's hit list. Some of you, the devil is not attacking you and you're not familiar with spiritual warfare because you're not doing it. You haven't reached your potential. You haven't got to the place with your relationship with God. You haven't got to the place where you're tapping into that anointing, tapping into those abilities and talents and using them for the glory of God to the place where you are a threat to the enemy. And I said, Lord, I want to be on the devil's hit list. I want I want him to come for me. I want him to attack me. And I want you to get the glory out of my life. It says count it not strange. And and it began I began to think about how that word just brought life to me and how it spoke something to me. It said I want to be on the devil's hit list. It's a fight. We're in a fight and I'm not going to stop fighting because of what I got going on around me. I'm not going to allow the devil to dictate the way that I praise. I'm not going to allow the devil to dictate my worship. I'm not going to allow the devil to dictate what I offer up to God on a daily basis. Just like David, I may be 12 years old, but I'm going to fight because I got a God that's inside of me. I may have messed up, but I'm going to fight because the God that is fighting for me, I may be a little bit older, but I'm going to fight. I might be young, but I'm going to fight. I might be broken, but I'm going to fight. I might be hurting, but I'm going to fight. You might talk about me but I'm a fight you might mock me but I'm a fight and I'm a swing and I'm a praise to the day that I die the Bible says he that endures to the end shall be saved but Christians don't want to endure anything we want blessings without sacrifice we want crowns without crosses oh thank you Jesus The devil's going to attack. He's going to try to take you out. He's going to try to talk you out of your blessing. He's going to try to talk you out of your ministry. He's going to try to steal your joy. What do you do in those dark moments? Let me show you what the Lord showed me, man. He's going to allow you to go through some dark moments. You guys know I always talk about it. Joseph in the pit. Daniel in the lion's den. What happens when you get in that dark moment? Everything ain't going the way that you want it to go. Like today, I'm sitting there fighting depression. It was hitting me hard. I was fighting it hard. Now, I could sit there and feel sorry for myself. I could sit there and keep my mouth shut. I could sit there and not open up my word. I could sit there and not get in God's presence and just, oh, I'm waiting for God to come to me. I can sit there in the darkness and turn on the light that's inside of me, right? Because don't you have the light? The Bible says that... The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living in you. It's inside of you. But you've got to turn it on with Marcus. How do I turn it on when I'm depressed? How do I turn it on when I feel broken? How do I turn it on when people are mocking me? How do I keep the fire? How do I protect the fire? It's by getting into the presence of God. Even when you don't feel like it. I'm going to get in his word. I'm going to speak to myself in the dark place. I see the darkness around me. And I see the enemy telling me it's dark. You might as well quit. You might as well give up. You might as well throw in the towel. But the light inside. 
inside of me. What is the light? The spirit of God, the word of God that is inside of me says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The gates of hell will not prevail. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All things are working together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. It's already inside of you. The word of God is already inside of you. God is fighting battles for you that you don't even know about. He's making a way for you that you can't even see. All you've got to do is protect what he's put inside of you. The devil comes to you and he says, and this happened to me in Korea. It was another time I was having a low moment. Turn that off. Turn that fire off. Turn, you know why the devil don't want you to have this thing on? Because the light is shining on everything around me. You turn it off, it's not shining on your family. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm not embarrassed. I'm way beyond being embarrassed. That went away a long time ago. I don't know how to do, to do anything but be real with you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The devil wants you to turn this off. He wants you to put your fire out because fire is contagious. I turn my fire on and you see my fire shining in the darkness. You see my fire penetrating through the depression. You see the light of God shining through me and you say, man, I, I want that. I want that fire. I want that passion. I want that drive. Well, how do you get it through the fire to be on fire? I'm in the fire. I'm in the darkness. I'm in the trial. I'm in the wilderness. In Solomon, it talks about one coming out of the wilderness perfume with smoke. Just like, you know, Jesus had to go through the wilderness you come out of the wilderness with power you come out of the wilderness with fire why because when you go through the darkness right you got a choice to make you can say look I'm gonna quit I'm gonna give up I'm gonna fight and you draw strength from the word of God the spirit of God that is living inside of you you don't wait for the perfect. You don't wait for the light to come shine on. Some of you, I'm waiting for a word from God. I, I, he gave you a word. He gave you a word. You say, I'm waiting for a word from God. When is the last time you opened the Bible? Have you hidden it in your heart? It's inside of you, but you got to turn it on. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God is like matches, man. I said this today. It's like a match. You strike it. It catches fire and you strike that right that right one man you're just gonna set the world on fire you're gonna set your friends on fire there's gonna be great revival I would encourage I just wanted to be real with you tonight if there's anybody else out there who's going through a hard time like I've I've been going through hey we we go through it too and if you're not going through something if the devil's not attacking you you're not doing something right my brother my sister if you're living to your full potential and, and, and being on fire and being sincere about your relationship with God, the devil's coming for you. All these people who lie to you and say Christianity is just supposed to be so easy and blessings. No, it doesn't work like that. Spiritual warfare is real. That's why the world is acting so crazy. And God is just looking for somebody to stand up, to be bold. But to prepare us for what is coming, we got to go through the fire. To prepare us for what is coming, we, we got to go through some trials to toughen us up, to test our muscles. So you got a choice to make tonight. You can sit there and you can quit on your dream. You can sit there and quit on your vision. You can sit there and quit on your relationship with God. You can sit there and quit on your marriage or you can fight. And I'm fighting too. I, you guys are not alone. I'm fighting every day. Every day I want to deactivate my Facebook page and never open it again because of all the negative comments and all this. Like, why don't they get it, Lord? Why don't they get it? Because you want people to get it. You want people's eyes to be open. And it's almost depressing when they don't. So I'm praying for you guys. You guys be praying for me as well. God's going to do some great things in 2018, but the devil's making some moves too. So we got to be ready. Casual Christians would be casualties. Sometimes I see what's, sometimes I see what's going on in the world, and I get depressed. People, I, I can't, man. When people tell me stay out of politics, it just gets depressing. 
And see, what kind of Christian are you? Did you say stay out of politics, but what we got going on in this world, it affects your children. It affects the church. It affects Christianity. It affects the God. And I get frustrated and I get I, I, I get this depression that I feel coming. I mean, I'm like, Lord, they don't get it. They don't see. Some are too proud to see. And it's like it almost breaks your heart, man. And a lot of times you guys don't see I'm posting stuff and I'm crying. I'm posting stuff and I'm weeping. I'm posting stuff and I'm laying on my floor crying out to God. Open their eyes. Open their eyes. Show them what you showed me. And not only with that, not only with the dreams and visions that he showed me, but show them your love. Show them how special they are. Show them that they have potential. Show them that they can overcome. Show them that they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. Show them that nothing else in this world is going to satisfy them like you. Show yourself mighty in their life. Shape them. Make them. Create them. Mold them. Break them. Whatever it takes, Father, for them to see and be on fire for you. See, I'm not one of these Christians, pastors, preachers, whatever you want to call it, that's going to act like I don't have any struggles or that I'm perfect. If it wasn't for Jesus, I'm just a dirty sinner like everybody else. I'm just a wreck without Jesus, just like everybody else. If it wasn't, Jesus is literally the best part of me. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. You got preachers out there, you know, they, they try to keep up their image, you call it, with everybody's going through something. Everybody's fighting a battle. A preacher who's not fighting a battle is not a real man of God. Because if, if they're a real man of God, they're going to be on the devil's hit list and the devil's going to be coming for them all the time. So if your life is just smooth and easy, you might want to step it up. Oh, man. Love you guys. Be blessed. I want to clarify one thing, though. I had a thought, you know what I'm saying? Just with the different things going on. It's like, you know, you have that passion. I'm honest enough to say that. You know, a lot of people wouldn't be honest enough to say that because a lot of people, uh, you know, they got to keep an image. You got to keep it like they're all together. They're fake. I'm real. I had a, I had a passing thought. I was like, man, Lord, this is just so depressing. Looking at what's going on in this world. Looking how lukewarm the church is. You know, some things that was going on in my life. So, you know, it's a passing thought. But I would never, ever stop fighting. I, <laughs> I get strength just getting in the presence of God. So I'm honest enough. The reason why I did this video is because I want you to know that, you know, hey, you might be looking at Marcus like, man, he's, he's this, he's strong, he's fired up, but I'm going through stuff too. But the thing is, I never allow whatever I'm going through, nothing to stop me from getting in the presence of God. If I have a bad thought, if I have a temptation thought, if I have people who do me dirty, if I have something going on with my children, something going on with my job, something going on with my family, people, person, whatever I'm going through, no matter how low I get, I never allow that to stop me from running into the presence of God. Never. Because when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn. And the veil was torn so I could run in there boldly every time I needed a touch. So I just wanted to be real with you. I'm, uh, I really don't care if somebody has something negative to say. I hope whoever needed to see this tonight, they saw it. And I hope that they're encouraged to keep fighting and to keep pressing and to keep going on. Keep running the good race, all right? Run that race. We endure to the end. The Lord, even though this world is crazy, he's gonna crack the sky and every knee is gonna bow and every tongue is gonna confess. You guys be encouraged. Have a wonderful evening. Pray for me. If you got a prayer request, put it in the comments. I'm praying for you guys. Uh, check out the book, Through the Fire to Be on Fire on Amazon. All right, we're in a war. We're in a war. But you know, in the end, we win. The victory was won when the sun was hung.